Karaiti, kia ora rai, te whānau, uh, nei mai hoki mai uh, to the Planting Seeds podcast, uh, whakatou i te kākano, uh, thank you all so so much for the amazing support so far, uh, please continue to support by you know, sharing it on your stories or just telling someone, I think that'll be very, very helpful because definitely keen to keep riding this this wave of momentum because there is, I'm feeling at the moment that there is a um, a strong sort of need for something like this and, and I'm cool to be, it's cool to, to be able to see those shoes and, and just try and fill them and, and walk in this pathway because to me, I really, really love doing this type of mahi. I love sitting down and and sharing deep and meaningful conversations with people who are smarter than me, but also on the same journey. And I think it just provides such an awesome resource for people who who just don't know where to look, who who may have an idea but just don't um, know where to start. So for myself, it's I like to know that I can have fun doing this but also you know I can just see and and feel that that people are really enjoying this journey too so I really do appreciate the support and your continuous support on this uh, waka um, is definitely definitely appreciated so keep it up (laughs) but we're just gonna just walk straight into uh, the topic for today and and it's around um veganism because I get loads of messages um, around uh, veganism and it's because you know this is the brand that I have this is what I've created for myself being the plant-based Maori because I just own it because this lifestyle has just given me so 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 much and if I didn't make that transition you know I don't know where my life would be and I just can't imagine me not living in this way and the amount of fulfillment, the amount of happiness, the amount of good that's sort of fallen into my life because of this one decision has just been profound. It's been unreal. And I've been going um, down this journey probably the last six months, And but mainly when I've started this, it's always trying to find the connection between te ao Māori and a plant-based diet or vegan lifestyle, but recently over the last six months as I've been doing some mahi with um, Aratoa, we've been trying to figure out, you know, what's a better way to, to look at this lifestyle because the word vegan, there's some associations to to this way of living there. People just turn away, oh, excuse me, <laughs> people just, just turn away because of what's associated to to this idea of vegan and you know for me and just just talking recently with a friend um we've been talking about tupuanuku you know as opposed to vegan you know how about we just translate it into maori and just and just say it's it's tupuanuku because i think if there's a maori sort of approach to it and that's why i've called my business tupuanuku it's because i want it to be relatable for for everyone and I think Tupuanuku gives it a much more easier sort of approach, you know, even like the passive approach that it is. And if we just break down Tupuanuku, and we just had Matuarangi on the podcast, you know, a month or so ago, and Tupuanuku is a star within the Matariki cluster. And when that star is shining brightest amongst the Matariki cluster at a certain time of the year, it means it's the best time to cultivate and harvest food from the ground. So tipu is grow, or tipu, depending on where you are. Tipu is grow. A nuku is from the ground. So nuku is, is of papatua nuku. Right, so tipu anuku is just pretty much, you know, food that is grown from the ground. And that's basically what the lifestyle is, or the way of eating is. Um, so if I just adopt that, you know, tupu anuku and just say that that's vegan, I think it's going to be a lot more easier for people to at least walk into the door because as soon as you're curious and as soon as you um, have that awareness about you that you want to try and find um, things out a little bit more, walking into something like that might be a bit easier than vegan because, 
you know, it's, yeah, I, I, I'm aware of the lifestyle because I'm in it, but just coming from an outside perspective, looking in, I can definitely see the fear and the challenges straight away that you're going to be faced with when you're just um, met with vegan. And it's it's only done that because of the extreme activists that are out there, um, whether they're active activist in animal welfare, environmentalist, um, or even just for wellness. But at the end of the day, I think we need people who are the extremists, and then we also need people who um, are the passive. And, you know, myself and my brother Te Hainui Tuna, we choose to take this passive approach because at the end of the day, for me, I know that I've accepted in myself that not everyone is going to go vegan. Not everyone is going to go to Buanuku. Um, and for myself, I just needed to release that because it's, it would have would have required so much energy and so much um, upfront battle that it would have taken me away from my purpose. And my purpose is really just to instill positivity and transformative changes through living my life in the best way that I could because I know in that people will receive the permission to do so in their own life, whatever that may be. But food and my journey through Tupuanuku has just given me the vehicle to live out my purpose in a way that I just couldn't imagine. But every time that I do get up and speak or get asked to do events, I really don't talk about uh, Tupuanuku as such. I mainly talk about my process of how I... Um, got to the point in trying to Buanuku for a month. And because I think that's important. I think it's more about the journey to getting to the point than getting to the point and talking about everything else. Because the majority of the people that I do talk to are having these questions within themselves about, you know, what is ve- what is Tupuanuku? Um, do I need to do it in my life? Um, people are aware of it, but just don't know where to start. And at the end of the, at the end of the day, Etifano, that's where I was at. The way that I started my journey was simply a seed of curiosity, and this seed of curiosity was planted by my best mate, the Honi Tuna. If you know me and you've been following my content and my journey, you should have an idea of who this amazing man is. His Instagram is Te Honui Art. Um, but in 2016, he was living in Palmerston North and I was living in Australia. But at the end of that year, we moved back to Fakatani, So we were just around each other a lot. And I saw the way that this man was living in. And I know my best friend. And I saw that he was happy. I saw that he was strong in his truth. So for me, I was just like, man, if he is you know, living this lifestyle, but also millions of other people around the world, and they're not willing to budge, you know, what is it about the lifestyle? So I was just observing him for, you know, months, I wasn't even really asking that much much questions, I was just observing, and I just saw that he was happy, eh? and I was just like, far out, you know, if if he's happy, and, and I know my best mate, you know, I might have to give this a try. But there had to be some reconditioning in my mind because I never grew up, you know, just eating plants. There was always meat. If in any case, they would ask for extra meat or extra cheese on things. So that process had to happen. But I wouldn't have even thought about it if, you know, the brother wasn't around me. And I think if people are able to see it in that way, So if you've been following my journey and if you're looking from the outset, looking in and you can see the lifestyle that I choose to live and filled with so much passion and drive and gratitude, just look at just me, just look at me or look at my brother Henry, look at other people who are just living very, very well in their truth. And if you just reverse engineer that, like if they're feeling great, what is it about that? that makes them feel great that I can adopt in my life. And at the end, if you can just sort of take something from people and apply it into your life and just think of yourself as a guinea pig, just the willingness to try something, I reckon it could really exceed the limited expectations that you could sort of grow into. So for me, that's how it basically all started. And in 2016 also, 
I committed to growing myself as a person. 2017 was the year I went alcohol free for the year because in 2016 I had a eight week challenge where I done zero alcohol and that ended up being a profound experience too. So I thought if I could go alcohol free for six for eight weeks and feel great, what would a year look like? And then I was like, well, if I'm also going to do that, what would it look like if I challenged myself each month to do something different because I knew that growth operates outside of our comfort zone. And if we are able to breach our comfort zones, we're exposed to ways to grow in which would be beneficial for tapping into this untapped potential that we all have. So in... 2017 I had all of these different challenges uh first one was you know going takeaway free for the month and then I remember in that month that people in my circle were just like oh he can't go alcohol free and takeaway free you know in that month so after I finished that month I was talking to myself I was talking to myself and I was like well if people don't think I can do takeaway free for a month I'll just do it for the whole year you know so I done takeaway free as well as alcohol free for the whole entire year of 2017 too but within that, I'd done months where I'd just do like 100 squats a day, learn a word a day, learn a whakatauki a day, uh, go for a run every day, um, not have my social media for the month, and read a book for the month. And it sort of just progressed into April, We I said to myself, I'll go vegetarian for the month. And then in May, I said I'd go to Buanuku or vegan for the month. So from November to May, that gave me six to seven months to try and recondition my mind to try something that I had never done before or that I thought I'd ever do. So for me, it's all about sustainability and doing things the best that I can because if things don't work out, you can't always go back into the life that you're living. It's that simple. But because you need to measure how things go, if you're do th- doing things half-assed, if you're doing things um, at like 70%, you're only going to get 70% results. And if you're going in there with a 70% attitude, you only need that 30% to like help you fail, basically. And if you're hearing things from outside people saying, oh, you know, what about your protein? What about your iron? That 30% is going to attach to that. And sort of fall, make you fall back into the lifestyle that you're living. Right? So for me, I needed that seven months to make sure that I was going into this 100%. And to me, it's all about preparation. To me, it's all about having an open mind. To me, it's all about going in with the attitude of getting the best result. So in that seven months, I was just like my best mate's tail. And this is when I started to ask questions And when you're asking things from a genuine place, you're going to receive genuine answers that's going to help you. So I also just fell into this rabbit hole of um, watching documentaries on Netflix, things like Earthlings, things like um, What the Health, Cowspiracy. But the one that I always get people to watch is a documentary on Netflix called Food Choices because I think the approach that they take is just awesome. Um, because the other ones are real dominant in certain things so earthlings is around animal welfare and how food actually ends up on our plate Uh, because the things that we're not aware of is how food is actually ending up on our plate or if we are aware we sort of dilute it a little bit by just not wanting to know more about it so that's what that um, documentary is about, and it's really, really, really hard to watch. It's like a punch in the face, but it's necessary to just to get an idea. The other one is uh, What the Health, and that's just talking about the wellness, um, the positive health benefits that you can attain from eating a plant-based diet. The other one is Cowspiracy, so the environmental impact that... Um, the dairy and meat industries are having on our environment but food choices it pretty much encapsulates all of those things into one and and the guy who runs it he's yeah he does a great job so I've watched that a few times because there's some good things in there some awesome doctors and just like everything at Defano you just got to go into these things with an open mind and yep of course 
they are basically sort of um they're basically all supporting um this tupuanuku lifestyle but if you're going in there wanting to know answers, you know, these are the places to look. And there's always going to be an opposite sort of documentary or information over here. They might contradict it. But it depends on where you are, you know, where you are in the journey that you want to embark on. But for myself, as soon as I started to learn all of these things and, and my why just sort of developed as I started to journey through this. So the first instance was curiosity. The next thing, it just went into like seeing animals for actually a being, not just an animal. And then it sort of moved into like the health benefits. And I knew that my the health benefits wasn't really a draw for me because I was always really healthy anyway. I was always doing, um, you know, I was always training, always doing different diets like keto and paleo just to try and get those massive health benefits. But then it sort of moved into this, into Cowspiracy and, and seeing the environment for what it actually is. And my whole journey has always been trying to find the alignment between Te Ao Māori and this Tupuanuku way of living. And as soon as I went straight into the environmental impact, I was like, far out, there's a massive connection here. Because as Māori, we always talk about our pepeha. You ask any Māori where they're from, what river they come from, what mountain they connect to, we all should have an idea of, of those landmarks that, that we connect to. So when I stand up, I talk about you know my maunga, I talk about my awa, I talk about my moana, I talk about my hapu, my iwi, and I didn't really register the impact that the meat and dairy industries are having on our land as well as our waterways, and the majority of the waterways within Aotearoa are polluted and it really does come down to the meat and dairy industries. So when I get up and acknowledge my river, Waiotahe, and that channels into Te Ahiowa, which is just around the bend, which was a food basket for my ancestors, that waterway is actually polluted. So I'm acknowledging my riverway that is not doing well. And as Māori, when we came into this environment in which we now occupy, we have a strong connection to the environment in which we occupy. You know, like I said, we have connections to to all of these things, but when they're unwell and we're acknowledging them, I feel we have a way to step into these shoes of being a kaitiaki and doing our best to make sure that um, they are going to keep in a healthy state and for me if I can just eliminate meat and dairy then man I think it's it's going to be beneficial not just for myself but for generations to come because I'm the one that's going to be gone but I want my grandchildren and their children to grow up in an environment where they don't have to worry about pollution or anything like that so there was that connection right there and I was able to create a fourth pillar, a fourth pillar because I talked about the first three, the animal welfare, the environmental impact and the health benefits. But then I sort of started to think about what if there was a fourth pillar? What if I created a cultural perspective of a tupuanuku way of living? And when I think about this fourth pillar being a cultural pillar and it's just talking about where we are as Māori at the moment, there is something that is limiting us from becoming and stepping into our own. And I don't need to look very much further than the things that are umbrellaing our culture at the moment. And the majority of them are, are not great. Then We're not representing ourselves in the best way that we could because we're dying of heart disease, we're dying of... Um, cancer, we're dying of diabetes, you know, we are disconnected from our land, um, we're filling up prisons, um, you know, we're filling up mental health institutes, so all of these things are just really, really heavy on my heart, they are heavy on my heart, and if I was able to talk about, you know, our relationship to food, and maybe somehow the food choices that we do make could really start to shift those things into more of a positive light. 
And that's why I say that food and my journey through Tupu Anuku has given me a vehicle to sort of live out my purpose, which is to create transformative changes for te ao Māori and to change the perception of what it means to be Māori. So for me, it had to go that much deeper in order to sustain this lifestyle. And the majority of people think that this lifestyle is is the westernised sort of idea. But as soon as I started to do my own digging into research and trying to, again, look into um, into my Māori sort of knowledge base, I guess, I started to find some things. And it came from a tohunga here. His name is uh, Pauroto Ngaropo. He's the guy who is a rangatere. He's a chief of this area in which we occupy. And then he told me a story of the first occupant of this area and his name was Toite Huatahi. Toite Huatahi is an only child and 600,000 Māoris descend from this ancestor. And when he migrated to this land and he started to live in a way where his sub-tribe or his people started to see the way that he was living and they gave him this name Toi Kairako. So Toi is his name Kairako eats trees or eats plants, right? So it wasn't, he didn't give himself this name. It was the people around him. They saw the way that he was living, so they changed his name from Toi Te Huatahi to Toi Kairako. And Toi Kairako is the common name that we all associate to this one ancestor. So when I look back into my own whakapapa, I can see that Tupu Anuku, this way of living, is just part of who we are as Māori so there's a connection there and what I do with um, my kai business Tupu Anuku is I just try and and show people that that it is possible that the tools are there that the ways of eating to to not only benefit your own life but for a much bigger picture it is possible and for myself it's just approaching it with a more you know, that passive approach and an open-mindedness, but not willing to change people, but to help people become a lot more conscious around the food choices that we're making. And at the end of the day, Tefano, I am feeling absolutely great. People are talking about, what about your proteins? What about your irons? I don't even worry about any of that stuff because I'm operating from a place of feeling. I've gone away from, you know, trying to look a certain way, I'm going, I'm attracted so much more to just feeling consistently great. And it comes down to the simple focado that it, all of the research that I've done, it all talks about if you're eating a variety of different food each and every day, you shouldn't have any problems, you know. So I wake up and I always, you know, I'll, I sometimes only have two meals a day, you know, because I'm allowing my body to work, I'm allowing my body to to do what it's meant to do. And if I'm eating a lot in those meals that I am having, you know, I just haven't had any problems. In the two and a half years that I've been living this Tupu Anuku lifestyle, I haven't had any problems because I'm making sure to eat a lot. When I'm hungry, I eat. I don't worry about any of the macronutrients or anything like that because for me, it's just about keeping it simple. Um, Try and stay in tune with yourself. If you feel that you're a little bit uneasy, drink water, eat some kai or if you are wanting to be a bit more like tracking everything, you can go to your doctors and get all of your nutrients and everything sort of done through a blood test. You can go into different diets, but for me, it's all about just tapping into this um, holistic well-being and just feeling great, not just physically, but spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and this is what this lifestyle has done for me. We talk about if you were to go and do an eight-week challenge or or do something, there's always an initial spike because your body's always going to respond well to to change. But the thing that, that I realized was as soon as I started these diets and dropped off them, man, I just got depressed because I couldn't sustain the results. But jumping into this Tupu Anuku lifestyle, I've had that initial spike in the month of May 2017, but I've never dropped. I haven't dropped All I have done is there's been like a little plateau and then I'm having spikes from time to time. So for me, I'm just consistently feeling great. And if that is the result 
of just eating more plants or eating predominantly only plants then I'm going to continue to do that because amazing things are happening in my life and it all came down to this lifestyle change and I think that it is truly attainable and the things that most people are worried about is the environment and where they are so if they're living with whanau if they're going to marae um, there's a bit of leniency for people where they can't complete um, can't commit fully and I'm all good with, like, I'm sweet as, I don't cast judgment on anyone. But for myself, this was something that I needed to do. And I need to stand strong in it. So when I had this um, whakaro of going um, to Puanuku, I talked to my whanau. I'm very, very fortunate to have very supportive parents um, and whanau that, that are just accepted and they do their best to um, help with the journey. And when I've gone on to Marae, I just either um, talk to the Fano and let them know my journey. Um, I, I do it in a way that it doesn't step on their mana. Or if I'm super onto it, I'll make a plate and I'll take enough for people to try. And I'll just leave it there just so people have an idea. Because the last thing that we do want is the takahi on the mana um, of the hokanga and people. But there are definitely ways around it. And for me, because I'm just so strong and the reasons why I do this, I have to find alternative ways. And now I'm cooking on marae. Now I'm able to give recipes and things like that to help the whanau. Um, Whether or not they take it or not, um, that's them. But I always have to just try my best to, yeah, just to come in there and, yeah, not be disrespectful. And luckily enough, I haven't had any whanau um, that has felt disrespected in that regard so yeah it's just one of those things that you have to work through um, but yeah to find I've spoken a lot I didn't expect it to go this long um, but that's just me I always have to go into a little bit of detail uh, I do have a recipe book uh, called Tupu Anuku that I've sort of taken off the website but I'm just starting to do a thing where I'm going to take on um, 10 people or so and just going to work through them for the for four weeks which is stipulated in the recipe book um, but yeah I'm just going to try and be a bit more intentional with um, how I roll things out because I know it's a lifestyle that people are interested in but for me it's it's about sustainability so I uh, hope you have enjoyed uh, this podcast session I know it's a bit long but hey if you have enjoyed it if it has helped you uh, let me know and yeah, we'll just keep tricking this path. And if you're not, honestly, it's fun. If you're not um, keen on the Tupu Anuki diet, that's sweet as. It's all good. Um, I just honestly want the best for everyone. And I really, I really mean that. Like, I honestly just want people to be happy. I really do. It's a fun. Mauri oho, mauri ora. Ka kite. Ka kite.